Today we're at the Maastricht School of Management or MSM in the Netherlands. The school has identified three key themes, technological change, globalization and demographic change, and says if business schools aren't teaching these, they'll become irrelevant. I think the future healthcare professionals uh, will have to have a clear understanding of economic principles. You'd have to know how to create and manage budgets. These are all things that we weren't taught uh, how to how to how to do as clinicians. Any business, any business, uh, if you're serious about it, you have to have a digital transformation. You have to have innovation. You have to have uh, all these things in in business. The healthcare is changing, and I don't think per se maybe everybody needs to as a clinician, but I do think that clin the clinical managers uh, will definitely have to, to change their, 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 their tools and they need to understand the business tools in the future. They, they, the teachers here, I know they teach all over the world, so also that sometimes they bring cases from, from China saying, hey, look what is happening in China. Yeah, yeah. And this, is, uh, I think, is enriched the, the program. Oh, the teaching staff is excellent. Um, you really see that they're very experienced. Uh, and they show that with enthusiasm, even like when they're teaching in front of the class. You're always able to approach them. You can contact them during the modules, after the modules, and they're really willing to help and to coach as well. I'm very happy uh, with the program. Now I'm almost done. I have to say that I was uh, sometimes overwhelmed of, of the, of the uh, challenge of, of the courses. But when you come here, basically you, of course, you um, you expand, expand uh, your, your vision about business, yeah. MSM is a great choice. Um, I would definitely recommend them to go and, 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 and follow the, the, the modules here. I think it's very, um, it's, it's very interesting because of the different backgrounds of the people. It's very international. You're put together in a class with people, with, you know, with sports, with, with, who, who are engineers, who, who are technicians. Um, and really challenge you to think differently as well. You have different discussions that you would perhaps in a different school where you're together with the same, same group. And that's really what attracted me about MSM as well. Here in London again, I've brought back with me from the Maastricht School of Management two people, the Dean, Professor Wim Nodé, and Oliver Olson, Director of Global Education Programmes and Senior Lecturer in Marketing and Strategy. I'm Sarah Lockett, welcome to the Business Debate, and welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Thank you, Sarah. So, Oliver, first of all, as we saw their current students giving you a glowing testimonial, what do you think that they particularly get out of their time with you? Well, the time on campus in Maastricht is an important component of the MBA. The MBA is a lot of pieces. It's the content, which is important, but you find content at many schools. Um, the uh, student experience, actually being with each other, getting that networking, actually practicing, putting it into practice in a somewhat of a one-year boot camp is a very important component, and we hopefully you've seen that from the students. And looking at the three key themes that you've identified, Wim, firstly, technological change. So it's estimated that 40% of jobs are going to be automated in the next 20 years. So how does that change what you teach? Uh, yes, Sarah, indeed. Uh, technology is all a rage and it's going to transform business, industry, society thoroughly. Uh, indeed, as the predictions indicate, a lot of jobs will change uh, fundamentally. How are we uh, addressing that? Well, we have uh, created a number of specializations in our MBA degrees uh, in terms of managing the digital transformation, the digital economy. And we have also created no less than five MSc programs uh, in management and engineering. So we are focusing on really high-tech management, high-tech engineering, but offering that as a course for managers, people who want to manage this change, people who want to make sure that they create the right kind of jobs, that they build the right kind of skills to be able to utilize this technology. And you've also picked globalization as one of your key themes. So we increasingly need multicultural management skills, like what? Well, globalization is something that we were born with. We're, this is our 65th year, and we were originally founded as a global-based school to give education, especially to emerging and developing markets. We found that over the last 10, 15 years, the world has caught up with us, that barriers have continued to drop, and the type of management skills we've been teaching to fast emerging economies are now in demand in all economies. 
And if we think about demographic change, your final sort of focus, that it's shifting what business leaders need to know, in what way and how are you teaching them that? Yes, it's, it's all about the customer in the, in the end for the business and uh, you have to understand the demographics of the world uh, to be, you know, really understand your, your customer. We find that uh, in Europe the population tends to age, uh, Africa is very young, it will continue to grow uh, and we find all kinds of labour market pressures and this is going to affect the effectiveness of and the competitiveness of companies because human resources are the most important asset and resource of any company. So for human resource strategies, finding the right people, investing in the right people, having the right skills in this technological age that we've mentioned, uh, means that understanding the demographics, the opportunities and the risk it brings is really vital. And there are some 16,000 business schools worldwide offering different quality. Would you say that some of those qualifications are maybe almost worthless, not recognised by employers? Well, I won't speak about the ones that are worthless, but I will say that of those 16,000, only 2% have a AMBA accreditation, for example, which is the British-based Association of MBAs, and we're one of those. We also continually pursue different accreditations so that we can not only prove to ourselves that we are delivering what we say we are, but it's an external viewer coming in and also validating the quality and worth of what it is we're delivering in our programs. And you also say you're one of the most international business schools in the Netherlands. Is that something you've worked on or has it just happened that way? No, we've really worked on that. Um, from the beginning when we were created, the idea was that we would play a role globally uh, in providing management skills. Uh, initially in the 1960s, 70s, that was to rebuild a lot of countries after colonialism. Um, and a lot of uh, infrastructural investments uh, were done in these countries. But of course, if you are doing big engineering projects, you also need managers to project manage to deal with the financial aspects, etc. And that still remains critically important because we also see at the moment with technological change, investments in physical infrastructure throughout the world, that sometimes the bottleneck is the human management skills to be able to efficiently utilize case resources to deliver uh, in terms of what people need. Well, Wim and Oliver, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in enterprise cyber risk and disruptive technologies. Bye-bye for now.